What is up, Nug Gang, Nug Fam, and YouTube? It is a new series that I am doing, and it is Nuggy True Crime Time. I am so excited for this moment. It's a new series. Um, it's also my first one of doing one of these, so it's probably going to be really horrible. So FYI, I apologize for the cringiness that for which you are about to watch. If it doesn't get blocked on YouTube, which it definitely could. Anyways, so the first one that I really wanted to, I guess, start this series out with is a story that I heard about a very, very long time ago. And it is one that I found to be an interesting story for different reasons. So this is going to be the story of Mary Bell. Mary Bell was a child serial killer. And you know, and it's, it's weird, you don't normally hear about child serial killers. This is a term that is not used very often. Now you do hear about, you know, serial killers when they, of course, are older, of troubled childhoods that they had when they were younger. And then, you know, you have some telltale signs of how they became what they became. Sometimes, not always. But what is interesting with the story of Mary Bell is that she committed her first murder at the age of 11. And this is just a very, very rare occurrence. And... So this is why I want to begin this true crime series with this story, because there's a lot of weird things with this case. Okay, so first I'm going to give you a little bit of background, and then we're going to go into what she did, the outcome, and then I'm going to go into my thoughts on this. So, I mean, you can be here for whichever part you want to be here for. Okay. Okay. Let's get started. Uh, so Mary Bell, who is what is who is pictured over here, uh, she was born May twenty fifth of nineteen fifty seven in the UK. Um, she was born into a not so bright and blooming family. Uh, unfortunately, she had a very uh, troubled life growing up. Um, she was born to a mother who did not want her. Her mother was a prostitute and uh, had often tried different things to actually get rid of Mary. Um, one of them being that she tried to actually give her away to someone else. One incident was trying to give her a bunch of sleeping pills and she called them treats. And another time, she pushed Mary out of a window. So, this is a very volatile home environment. Um, and it's very difficult for a young girl to really understand what is happening when your own mother is doing these kinds of things to you and you don't understand why. And also, there was never a father really in the picture of Mary's life. Um, it's never been reported of who Mary's father actually is, and I believe it is actually unknown who her father actually is. Um, but she did have multiple men in and out of her life because of her mother, and um, this has never been corroborated by anybody else, but Mary has stated in an interview, and maybe more than one interview, I don't know. I know I've read it in a few different places, but... Mary herself has told others that when she was a child, that she was sexually molested by different men that her mother had brought over into a home. So it is possible that this kind of things did happen to her, which would of course add more trauma to her life. Um, I'm not saying this to excuse what happened or to explain what happened as everyone is different and everyone reacts to things differently and there's different reasons for certain behaviors 
But this now leads me into the progression of Mary, okay? <sighs> Which means I'm going to show you another picture of Mary. <laughs> All right, so Mary Bell, when she was 11 years old, and a little bit before that, um, she was having trouble in school. And by trouble, I mean that she was bullying other students and reportedly strangling other students, hitting them, kicking them, saying violent things to them, trying to shove sand and dirt down some of the other students' throats, different things like this. Very kind of like violent behavior for a young child. And the day before her 12th birthday, she murdered a four-year-old boy by the name of Martin Brown. I'm going to show you Martin Brown's picture. Um, she essentially strangled four-year-old Martin Brown and killed him and left him in this abandoned house. And supposedly, there's no real, like, definitive part of this part of the story, because um, I've heard different things with it. It has been reported that it was her and another young girl that did this, and it's also been reported that, no, it was Mary alone, and this other young girl, she wanted to actually show what she had done to the other young girl, and it was just that. But um, the other young girl that had become her basically partner in crime, best friend, um, is actually a young girl by the name of Norma Bell, which oddly enough, they're not related. Um, basically, when as they were children, Norma Bell and Mary Bell shared the same kind of interest. And by interest, I mean this weird thing of wanting to go into not weird thing wanting to go into but these these interests of these violent types of fantasies and thoughts and things like this okay they shared these things so it is actually unknown if norma actually participated in the killing of martin brown or not but she was acquitted of the deed when it actually eventually went to court. So, in the eyes of the law, she had nothing to do with it. So, we're going to get rid of her photo. But then, Mary Bell did not stop with Martin Brown. Because what happened so, and I'm sorry, this is actually me not being very good at trying to tell this story because I'm actually thinking of a lot right now as I'm telling this story. Um, but essentially, she killed Martin Brown on May 26th of 1968. And then a few weeks later, she killed Brian Howe, who is a three-year-old little boy and she killed him July 31st of 1968. So essentially, she killed two little boys, and this is the photo of Brian Howe. She killed two little boys within a few weeks time. And she killed both of them by strangulation. But there was a little bit of escalation that occurred with Brian Howe. Now, did not happen at the time of the killing. She she killed Brian Howe and then left. And then later returned to his body with a pair of scissors. And she had cut his hair. She had cut up his body with a pair of scissors. She had mutilated his genitals and she had carved the letter M on his stomach. So this 
is an escalation of her behavior. And... Her dark fantasies that she was having and the interest of things that she was having. Now, like I said, her methodology did not change. She kept doing strangulation, you know, with the first her first victim being Martin Brown, who was a four-year-old boy, and then Brian, I mean, yeah, Brian Howe, who was a three-year-old boy. So, the victims were both were on the same age, um, they were both males, and she's the same methodology of kill. But with her last one, she took it up a notch and decided to mutilate the body and return to it. But actually, she did return to the first one, uh, Martin Brown, but when she returned to it, there was other boys there that had discovered the body of Martin Brown. And who's to say, I'm not sure if she would have done anything to Martin Brown's body if the other boys were not there. That's unknown and we will never know. But what is known is what happened with both little boys. So now we're going to go into the fact that of what happened after these little boys were murdered. So Mary Bell was very much acting very strangely through this whole thing which you know she wasn't already acting strangely before this but she was acting even more strangely with this whole thing because she was actually proud of what she had done there has been reports of her seeing the funeral and just her going like this and giggling and like she was just happy to see what had happened what her what she had done and then other reports of her going to, uh, I believe it was Martin Brown's mother's home, requesting to see the body. So it's quite morbid. So um, things like this were happening. And of course, investigators were becoming more and more intrigued with what she was doing. And there was also some vandalism that was going on after Martin Brown was murdered with, uh, I believe, a preschool or some type of school that was in that area. <sighs> with notes being left in the area um, that were not very nice notes. <laughs> they were they were not very nice notes at all. And uh, okay, the, luckily there was actually cameras installed there and actually had seen Mary go in there and do these types of things. So investigators were already very much interested into Mary Bell, and even more so when the murder of Brian Howe happened. So, essentially she became the number one suspect. And uh, she went to court, and she was found guilty. And she was sentenced to basically a prison for juveniles and then to later be transported into a facility for adults. But she ended up actually only serving mm, 12 years before she was finally released. Um, and here is a picture of Mary Bell when she is older. Um, she was actually released after only serving 12 years years she was released back into the population at the age of 23 and of course this caused a lot of controversy because how can you kill two little boys and then serve only 12 years and then of course this unfolded into even more things because she just wanted to be left alone when she was released and she kept being harassed by neighbors, people in the city, that she, whatever she would live in, and news people, media, journalists, whatever. She would be harassed by these people, and then she would end up having to, she ended up trying to go to court about this because she did not want her daughter to find out what she did. She had a daughter. <sighs> 
And actually, she was given, she actually won this, uh, this court thing that she went to court for about getting granted an anemone? I can't say that word! Uh, basically where she was granted, um, like, a new, a new identity, essentially. Um, and this helped her for a while. But then it was discovered again. So then she had to go to court again. And this one, the court made it very, very more strict with this, this whole issue of basically protecting her rights. And they made it to where she is essentially protected from people finding out her true identity. And she is a grandmother now. She's actually still alive. Um, and actually over there in the, in certain areas over in the UK, uh, they actually have the, this law that protects offenders that have been convicted of a crime. It protects their identity so that they can live a functioning life in society. Now you can agree with that or you can disagree with that. That's not for me to say. But that law that was granted because of this issue with her is now called Mary Bell's Law. Which is interesting. You know, you get a law... <laughs> You get a law named after yourself when you kill two little boys. And it just, it blows my mind. But actually, what actually interests me the most with this story is the fact that she never killed anyone again. Like, how can you show all of this, this type of behavior as a child and then get out at the age of 23 and then never show this type of behavior again. Like, this type of behavior you just don't get cured from. It's... I don't know. To me, it's an interesting thing, because the fact that she... committed these, these acts, and then the fact that after she served 12 years, she was cured of whatever made her commit these acts. It's just an interesting thing, and it's an interesting thing to try to learn and discover more about, because in regards to the idea of rehabilitation, for many other individuals out there, you know, there there's this idea that certain people cannot be rehabilitated. And I feel like this is true. In a lot of cases, there are certain individuals that cannot be rehabilitated. They are just a certain way. They have certain brain chemistry that prevents them from being contri like contributions to society. But what gets me is how did she have such a troubled childhood kill two innocent little boys? serve 12 years, and then just be normal. It's an interesting thought, and it's something, you know, I've wanted to dive more into and study, because when she was originally convicted, mental health professionals had diagno di diagnosed her with as a psychopath, essentially. And you don't just stop be like being a psychopath. That is like a lifelong thing. So, I don't know. It's interesting to see uh, how this played out like from beginning to end and how the fact that she has not gone back to her old ways. Or at least that we know of. I don't know. But it is an interesting story, and it is quite a terrible story, and what a way to start my true crime time series. So, yeah, this is going to be it for this series. Um, 
hope you guys enjoyed this story time. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know how to like end this thing without it sounding happy because this isn't something like happy to talk about, you know? Like it's a, uh, it's a horrible thing that happened. It's a horrible thing that exists in the world. And at the same time, there's so many people that are interested in why this happens. I am one of those that is like interested in why things like this happen and trying to discover ways to prevent things like this from happening. So that's probably why this story interests me quite a bit because I don't understand how you go from this point to this point and it's a complete like 180. Very intriguing. So, but that's gonna be it. Um, I know my true crime time stories definitely need some work, but that's gonna come with time and they will gradually get better as time goes on and I get more used to doing these. This is my first one, so give me a break. <laughs> but that is it. I hope you guys have a great, great night or day, whatever the time it, that it is that you are watching this. Please have a good day. So, and be safe. And yeah, that is it. So, peace out, YouTube. Peace out, Nug Gang. And peace out, Nug Fam. That is it for me. So, boop.